Last night, Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Oh, did the Mets come back with a bang. In the top of the second, Gary Carter launched the first of three Mets homers. And you'd better believe he enjoyed that baby. Then George Foster added a two-run shot in the fourth, and the Mets went in front 10-3. to three. George moved into the team lead with 16 dingers until the seventh when Darryl Strawberry ripped his 16th home run of the season and his fourth for the Mets in the last two games. Those were the big blasts, but the big story of Keith Hernandez is yet to come as the hot-hitting Mets, the first-place Mets, I might add, take on the struggling Chicago Cubs next, right here on Channel 9. Welcome to Mets Baseball 85, brought to you by... Budweiser, for all you do, this Bud's for you. By Nissan, who invites you to test drive the new 1986 Stanza Wagon, the only wagon with dual sliding doors. By Manufacturers Hanover, the financial source worldwide. By the Good Olds Guys, your New York, New Jersey, Southern Connecticut Oldsmobile dealers. By RC Cola, people go out of their way for the taste of RC. And by Express Mail, next day service from the Postal Service. Live from Shea Stadium in New York, it's Mets Baseball 85, as tonight the Mets take on the Chicago Cubs. Pitching for Chicago, it's Dick Ruthman, who is 4-7 and seven, with a 4.48 ERA. And going for the Mets, Ron Darling, 10-4 and four on the year with an ERA of 2.88. Well, hi, everybody. I'm Ralph Kiner, along with Tim McCarver and Steve Sabrisky, all set for a three-game series with the Chicago Cubs. It's a must-series for the Chicago Cubs. They're in fourth place, and they trail by nine. The Mets leading the Cardinals by a half game, sort of the reverse of what took place last year when the Mets were leading and the Cubs overtook the New York Mets to go on to win the National League East. And you can certainly understand it this year because the Cubs pitching staff has been decimated by injuries. As a matter of fact, Dennis Eckersley was scheduled to start tonight's ball game, and he is missing the turn, and that's the 25th ball game that their number four starters, Rick Sudcliffe, Scott Sanderson, Steve Trout, and Dennis Eckersley have missed this year. But, Ralph, really, that's no sign that the offense can't hit. Really, the problem with the Chicago Cubs right now, they are not swinging the bats. As a matter of fact, they're off a 1-0 or a 7-8-0 shutout by John Tudor and the Chicago uh, or the St. Louis Cardinals last night. And they only got one hit in that ball game, and that was by the right fielder Keith Moreland. Right now, let's go down to Steve Sabrisky and his special guest. Thanks, Ralph, and hi, everybody. Well, many people feel, and it was certainly demonstrated yesterday, that Keith Hernandez is the number one cog in the Mets' offensive machine. He's not too shabby defensively, of course. Yesterday, five for six. The second time in his career he's had five hits. And Keith feels that right now he feels just about as good as he can at the plate. Uh, well, Steve, you know, it's nice to contribute to the win. That's the most important thing. And, you know, we had two days off, and it really wasn't that much to get rusty. But I had flown all day, and my flight was two hours late. I had to take a nap prior to the game, about an hour nap, because I was exhausted. I didn't get to, to Montreal at around 3 o'clock. But, uh, you know, I feel as good as I can fit the plate, and I'm just glad I'm just trying, trying to maintain it and help the ball club win. If you can put it into words, and I know sometimes it's hard to put something intangible like that in words, what's the difference now? I know talking to your dad helped you a little bit, but basically, how do you feel now at the plate as opposed to before? Well, you know, hitting's all rhythm and timing and uh, obviously when you go in a slump uh, you don't have the rhythm and you lose a little bit of your timing uh, and obviously when you go good you've got your rhythm and uh, your, your timing's there and you know I feel as good as I as I can feel at the plate right now and uh, like I said earlier I just try to maintain it and of course Mets fans would echo that sentiment and we'll be back with the start of the first game of this Cubs series from Shea right after this word from Budweiser to 2.88 he has walked 78 struck at 117 given up 145 hits in 163 innings Ron Darling and Ron will be facing Bob Dunier leading off the center fielder second baseman Ryan Sandberg batting second Gary Matthews the left fielder will hit third Leon Durham at first base batting fourth Keith Moreland in right field this evening He'll bat fifth. Jody Davis behind the plate hitting sixth. Ron Say batting seventh, the third baseman. Larry Boa, the switch hitting shortstop, hitting eighth. And on the mound, Dick Ruthven. 
So Ron Darling with this defense Hernandez Backlund Santana and Johnson in the infield first to third Heap Dykstra and Strawberry in the outfield left to right Clint Hurdle doing the catching and Darling the pitching and the first pitch of the ball game to Bob Denier and it is popped up and playable Denier hitting 247 Santana makes a call and catch one pitch one away. Empires for the game tonight. Steve Ripley will be behind home plate. Dutch Renner at first base. Fred Brocklander, the umpire at second base. And Ed Montague, the umpire at third. Now Ryan Duren stepping in. Should say Sandberg stepping in. Sandberg hitting a 287 for the year with 15 home runs, 39 RBIs. And he has been in some sort of slump. He hits the first pitch, and it's a base hit. And that breaks an 0 for 15 streak. So two pitches, a runner on, and one man out, and it will bring up Gary Matthews. A lot of times when the leadoff hitter swings at the first pitch and makes an out, it is rather imperative that your number two spot hitter take the first pitch, and Ryan Sandberg crosses everybody up by swinging at it. So Sandberg at first base, and Matthews the batter. Matthews hitting at 224 with eight home runs, 22 runs batted in. Sandberg a threat to steal at first base. Darling with a fine move to first. And the first pitch of fastball. Sure, Jimmy Fry's approach is to swing their way out of the batting slump that the Cubs are in. And Sandberg, I've never heard of anybody getting out of a slump by taking pitches. There's Jimmy Fry, the manager of the Cubs. Manager of the year last year for the Cubs. Davy Johnson, the manager of the Mets, was runner-up. And Johnson certainly a contender for that manager of the year this year. Quick move to first. Sandberg, a fine base runner with 31 stolen bases. Cubs have had 121 stolen bases on the year. They have been a running ball club, and that's sort of different. Another one, very close. Now the reason this was so close Hernandez caught the ball and made the tag in the same sweeping motion. He's out. They got him. He's yeah. out. Cubs got a break there from yep. Dutch Render the first base umpire. He was tagged before he got back. Of course the umpires don't have the advantage of that slow motion replay That's and the good right. cameraman that we have here at Shea. As we mentioned darting with that great move. And Sandberg running with the pitch. The throw by Hurdle, a strong one, but not in time. So Sandberg, a stolen base, and the Cubs with the runner in scoring position. Well, Clint, of course, with not a lot of experience behind the play, watch how he's back on his heels before he makes his throw. And Clint has a strong throwing arm from the outfield, but there is a technique involved behind the plate that you don't really have the luxury of winding up and throwing the ball like you do when you're playing right field. Hurdle, a converted catcher, and a swing and a breaking ball. Hurdle started his career in the outfield and has been made into a catcher, catching in the minor leagues. As a utility ball player, he does a fine job. Sitting up here in the broadcast booth, a fellow who could appreciate catching. <laughs> and ball gets away from Hurdle, but Sandberg decides not to go, and wisely so. Yeah, we are graced with the presence of a future Hall of Famer on the first ballot, Johnny Bench, in the booth tonight, who not only knew something about technique, but had a howitzer hanging from his right shoulder, too. 105 millimeter. How about that uh, bat that he carried around with him? Wasn't too shabby either, was it? All time leader and home runs hit by a catcher breaking a record held by Yogi Berra one time. They're probably picking up our game in Binger Oklahoma tonight aren't they. Huh? <laughs> Here is the composite record of the Mets and Cubs so far this year. And it's hit in the air to shallow left center field Dykstra is there. And Len makes the catch Sandberg back to second base. So two men away. And that will bring up. Leon Durham Durham hitting 280 for the year 11 home runs 43 RBIs he missed the entire series that the Mets played in Chicago last weekend four game series Durham did not play because of a pulled muscle Cubs are playing with their regular lineup for the first time in a long time 
Leon Durham did not play in any of the four games last weekend that the Mets played at Wrigley Field. And the first pitch is low for ball one. Cubs bring a four game losing streak into this game and they are in fourth place nine games out. Sandberg the runner at second base two men away. And the fastball ball two two balls no strikes. Composite pitching record the Mets with the ERA at three point two one the Cubs three point five five and shutouts the Mets have doubled the Cubs and the Mets have more saves this year than they've had in a long time 23 to the Cubs 29 and of course Dwight Gooden adds on to those strikeouts for the Mets. Yeah. Ron Darling too. Now Darling with 117 strikeouts and there's a strike call two and one. Fifth place on the strikeout list set up by Dwight Gooden who has 179. Three and one the count. On deck batter a right hand batter Keith Moreland and he is a good hitter. Although first base is open. You can afford to walk here but you're going to be taking on a good hitter. Three and one the count and a fastball in a good spot fouled off. I think you start out in a situation like this because it is the first inning and you don't want base runners because base runners mean the opportunity for a big inning. You start out by pitching to him but then you fall behind and your theory changes he might get a breaking ball right here. Got to make him hit your best pitch with a runner in scoring position. Here's a three two pitch fastball and Darling picks up his first strikeout to end the inning. No runs one hit one man left at second and the score at the end of one half inning the Cubs nothing the Mets coming up now here's a word from the good old record of four and seven an earned run average of four point four eight. He has walked 37 struck out 26 given up 100 hits in 86 innings and he has a lifetime record against the Mets of 12 wins and 10 losses Dick Ruthman pitching for the Cubs. And Dick will be facing Len Dykstra leading off second baseman Wally Backman batting second Keith Hernandez what a night he had last night in Montreal five for six with three RBIs Daryl Strawberry in right field he has four home runs in his last two games Danny Heap the left fielder batting fifth tonight Clint Hurdle in his seventh start behind the plate batting sixth Howard Johnson will bat seventh the third baseman Rafael Santana the shortstop hitting eighth and Ron Darling on the mound and the last outing for Ron Darling he had three hits so you got nine hitters in the lineup tonight for the Mets and the defense for the Cubs Durham Sandberg Bowen say first to third Matthews Denier Moreland left to right and Davis the catcher and for the Mets Len Dykstra the lead off Len hitting 245 one home run 15 RBIs he has had 10 stolen bases and he'll be followed by Wally Backman Mets with a road record of 29 and 24 and a home record of 34 and 18. Mets and Cardinals have won 34 games at home. And the first pitch of the ball game by Ruthman is ball one. Now a strike one ball one strike. Dykstra started his season at Tidewater. Came up to the Mets hit a home run off. Mario Soto in his first game went back to the minors and a hard smash at Larry Boy. He digs it out, and now Durham has to dig it out on the low throw. So Larry Boa, who has played more games at shortstop than any player in the National League, comes up with an assist and one away. Larry Boa thought, if I'm going to have to handle that hop, you're going to have to handle the same hop. <laughs> Short hop to Boa, short hop to Durham. Good play on both ends. And Boa with that hop, skip, and jump with this throw. Little crow hop. Uh huh. Now Wally back from the batter. Wally has hit in seven consecutive games, and over that period has hit 406 to raise his average to 289. One home run, 23 RBIs. And a hard base hit to right field. Backman rounding at first base makes the big turn and now goes back into first. You just love to see Wally Backman take that wide turn at first base. This is a 
low tracer to right field. Look how Moreland gets over to the ball, taking a little bit for granted and taking his time, really. And Wally Backman took that wide turn, and if Moreland bobbles the ball just a little bit, he's on second base. Wally Backman with that Pete Rose type hustle and now the batter coming up Keith Hernandez and what a player Keith has been in the last two months the player of the month of July raising his average from 251 to 301 in his last 30 or so ball games and the fastball strike one that's tough to do when you have around 250 ABs into June. He has batted 402 in his last 32 games. Mercy. With runners at second and third, he has hit 514. Mm. With 26 runs batted in, his on base average in those last 32 ball games, 479. Backman, a threat to steal, draws the throw at first base. Wally has 19 stolen bases. Ruthman with that peculiar setup, which is a new move to first base type setup. Holding that ball up high and out away from his chest. Looks so uncomfortable doing that. And the curveball and the count one ball and one strike. He almost holds his arms as far as Hernandez does with the bat. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Mets have scored 186 runs in their last 30 games with a team batting average of 293. Watch Keith get set and watch Ruthven get set. And the fastball under the knees in the count of two balls and one strike. Wally Backman, the runner at first base. One man out, bottom of the first inning. So far, no score. Backman will probably be running right here. Hernandez always makes contact in this situation. Boy, a long hold, and Keith asks for time and gets it from Steve Rip Ripley, the home plate umpire. Pitcher holding that long, you can freeze the hitter. Hey, your arms become taunt, don't they? Tighten up. 2-1 pitch and the runner not going. The ball slashed off of the glove of Ruthwin. He's lucky to get his glove on it. Maybe got a piece of meat on it. And he picks up the ad. It looks like he might have got his bare hand in there. Boy, that ball was hit hard. I mean, a rope back through the middle and watch Ruthwin. This ball, this is not by design. It hits him on the foot and then it comes up and hits his meat hand. And you can tell by the way he's picking that ball up. He's picking it up with three fingers. That his hand was hurting, but I think his major problem is that left foot of his. That ball hit all meat. It did not skip to hit him. It hit him square without hitting the ground first. Mm. Tim mentioned that Ow. Keith Hernandez had five hits in yesterday's ball game. He just missed. His sixth hit his last time up. Ball foul by a matter of a couple of inches. He did finally line out, and now here in his first at bat in this ball game, his seventh at bat, he hits another one hard. Ralph, I guess it's kind of a select your own poison situation. For Dick, I guess it's better to have your left foot bothering you than it is your right foot bothering you because you've really got to push off of that right foot. And while you have to land on that left foot, you hope that you can continue to pitch without having a problem with that arm, that throwing arm. Well, he's going to check it out now and see whether or not it will bother, bother him. Tim pointed out at the beginning of the broadcast that Dennis Eckersley, who was scheduled to be the starting pitcher, had to miss the turn, and Ruthman was moved into action for tonight's game. And Sutcliffe and Trout are on the disabled list for the cup. Boy, he's in a lot of pain, and he looks like it. Ruthman, a real competitor, came to the Philadelphia Phillies in 1978 for Gene Garber, who went to the Atlanta Braves. And of course, when Dallas Green moved to Chicago, he not only took Ruthman, but about half the Philadelphia Philly organization. Now it's Daryl Strawberry. Daryl hitting 267 with 16 home runs and 42 RBIs. He has hit four home runs in his last two ball games. The record is five. And the first pitch for ball one. 
Strawberry became the first National League player to have three home runs in the game when he had three Monday against the Cubs. And that one out of the strike zone. It's ball two. In the American League, two players have had three home runs in the game this year. Gorman Thomas and Lance Parrish. No, it's Larry Parrish. Larry Parrish of the Texas Rangers. Two balls, no strikes. And the good curveball, two and one. Strawberry has hit 400 against the Cubs this year. And in his last 30 ball games, he's hit 333. Total of 10 home runs and a base hit in the center field. Macklin will score easily. And the Mets go out in front one to nothing. RBI number 43 for Daryl Strawberry. And he, of course, has been red hot. As you said, Ralph, a 2-1 curveball. He hits it off the end of the bat, finds a hole, and Backman scores easily. So the Mets leading 1-0 here in the bottom of the first inning. Strawberry at first base, and the batter for the Mets will be Danny Heath. Well, those early leads allow you to do so much more than, than you are allowed to do when you have to play catch-up every day. Strawberry a threat to steal, the runner at first base, and Ruthman throws over there. Danny he playing in place of George Foster is being rested. Gary Carter also being rested tonight. It's kind of a strange way to put it. That's the way we were told this ball fouled off that they were being rested but they had two days off prior to yesterday's ball game. Well day game tomorrow but I agree with you that is a little strange. They were off Tuesday and Wednesday and then played in Montreal and both hit home runs in last night's game. But maybe with the day game tomorrow, the early day game, the 120 starting time. Strawberry at first base does not go, and Heap takes a slow off speed pitch and they count one ball and one strike. Heap has hit 381 in his last 13 ball games, and that might be the reason why he's playing against a right hand pitcher. One thing a manager can do and really should do is keep his bench players. Ready to play and active and strawberry running with the pitch but the fastball foul back out of play. Yeah you really achieve two things when you do that you give heap and hurdle playing time and you rest Gary Carter of course his knee has been acting up on him. Mets are obvious for obvious reasons are not going to cut on Gary but he probably will be operated on this winter after the season. And Danny heap has spelled George Foster several times this year. One and two the count. Mets leading one nothing. Two men out. Bottom of the first inning. And the curveball hit by Durham into right field. Strawberry on his way to third. Moreland's throw is a good one but not in time. And Strawberry in at third base safely. Fine throw by Keith Moreland. It was low enough to be cut off and that held Heap at first base. Larry Bull with that decoy the shortstop serving as the cutoff man you got to be sure with two out and as you said Moreland made a fine throw gloves it and that's the way an outfielder should pick up a ball like that pick it up with your glove hand and bring the glove to your hand and take it out and throw it you don't two hand those balls when you're charging a ball like that of course you'd know that better than I it was told to me at first by a fellow named Chris Speaker, who might have been the greatest center fielder that ever lived. Not a bad outfielder. <laughs> <laughs> now the batter will be Clint Hurdle, and Clint fouls off the first pitch. You know, I'll take that back. The first time I was told that was by Casey Stengel when I was about 17 years old on the playgrounds at Brookside. No, I guess it was at. Uh, Griffith Park in, in, Los, in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. You were yet to be a professional at that time. I was huh? in high school at the time, and Casey Stengel used to come out and watch the ball games that we played on Saturday. <laughs> One strike to pitch, and a line drive to left field. Right there, though, Gary Matthews, and that retires aside. The Mets get one on four hits, and 
and they leave two, and the score at the end of one. The Mets won and the Cubs nothing. Now here's a word from Nissan. Another tremendous crowd on hand. The Mets go again against the Cubs tomorrow afternoon at 120. Dwight Gooden on the mound against Fontenot of the Cubs. And on Sunday, a single day game at 135. Ed Lynch will be going for the New York Mets. And then the Phillies come to town next Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday nights, and a day game next Thursday. We do not have the pitching rotations in that Philly series, but as soon as we get them, we'll, of course, pass them right along. I'd like to remind you, too, that seats are available for the two games remaining with the Chicago Cubs tomorrow and also on Sunday. So come on out and join in on the fun. Mets leading 1 0, top of the second, and Keith Moreland, the batter. Moreland takes a pitch from Ron Darling for ball one. Moreland hitting 288 with eight home runs and 59 RBIs. Two balls, no strikes. I'd like to acknowledge a phone call from a man well known throughout the United States, Eddie Fainer. All right. The king of the king and his court. Great softball entertainer. Been around a long, long time. We were talking a while back about. Lou Nova, who was known in professional baseball and a player for the Chicago Cubs as Lou Novikoff, being the greatest softball pitcher ever. And Eddie Fainer called and said he was the best ever. He would know. He said right now, a pitcher named Herb Dudley is the best fast pitch softball pitcher ever, or at least playing today. And this one punched down the line is curving foul. So the count goes to three and two. Keith Moreland, one of those line to line hitters. He'll pull the ball when he has a notion and punch it when he has a notion. That's why he hits 300 or close to it every year. Well, he has 11 game winning RBIs, the most by any Cub. Keith Hernandez with 18 leads the National League. Keith also setting a Met record with his 18, a record that he held. Had 17 game winning RBIs last year. 3-2 pitch, and it's fouled off. It is a warm, human night here, Jay. Morning against the Mets has hit 340 lifetime. Ground ball to the shortstop. Santana with an easy play, and the throw over the first base for the out. So one away here in the top of the second that brings up Judy Davis. Jody Davis. Jody hitting at 231 with 10 home runs and 42 RBI. Jody with just two hits against the Mets in 18 at bats. One of the hits though a home run. And the slider off speed pitch pulled foul. I guess that was really the split finger fastball there. Ball breaking down more than across. And a good fastball. Two strikes to count. <laughs> Cubs busters, they're still going strong, huh? Better sell them this series. If they lose this series, it's all over for them. And looped out into left field, going back as Heap, and he can't get to it. It is over the wall and a home run. So Jody Davis looping that ball out over the fence and a home run to tie up the ball game. Well, the Cubs breaking a streak of 14 scoreless innings. They were shut out, out shut out on a one hitter last night by John Tudor. Boy, Jody Davis just muscled that ball out of the ballpark. A good pitch by Darling, but as Jim Cott used to say, if it's a good pitch, why does it go that far? I think that pitch hit right on top of the fence and bounced on over. So Davis ties it up. And now the batter is Ron Say. And Say takes the first pitch for ball one. Say hitting 226 with 13 home runs and 29 RBIs. That pitch Davis hits. You can't second guess or anything, say anything about it. He, Darling put the ball right where he wanted to. You got to give the hitter credit. 
And Ron Say pops it up. High pop up. Len Dykstra, the center fielder, and two away. Ron Say had his 13 game hitting streak stopped last night when the Cubs were one hit. Now yep. the batter will be Larry Boa. Ralph Don Zimmer, uh, third base coach, I was talking to him before the game, and he said last night was the first major league game that he has ever coached third where he didn't have to give a sign. Nobody <laughs> got there. Huh? <laughs> and this pitch fouled off by Larry Boa, the switch hitter. Boa hitting 246 with no home runs, 13 RBIs. Keith Moreland, as you said earlier, got the only hit of the game, and Don said that before he got that hit, it was... Before he got that hit, it was 2 and 0 to Moreland, and uh, he was going to give the sign for the 3 0 take sign, but it never got that far. So the base hit, and no signs given. There was a triple play in that ball game pulled off by the Cubs on Pendleton. It went 3 6, 4 6, 5 8. It took 28 seconds to be completed. <laughs> that I might heard be the longest that. triple play. Obviously, a rundown play for the third out. Might be the first time a triple play was ever timed. And how did they time it, you ask? <laughs> they timed it by replaying the play on television and timing it off that. And this pitch is low. I said Keith Moreland got that hit. Leon Durham was the Cub that got the only hit against John Tudor as he recorded his sixth shutout of the year to lead all National League pitchers. And a walk. So Boa walks in front of the pitcher with two men out mistake that sometimes catches up with you pitcher of course if he has to lead off the inning you'd like to see that when you're playing in a tough series and now the pitcher up here as the batter with a man on first base and two men out Ruthman's had four hits in 23 at bats Batting average of 174. One one ball game top of the second inning two men away. We had a base hit up the middle by Dick Ruthwood who limps as he goes down to first. Remember he was hit by that line drive off the bat of Keith Hernandez. So Ruthman with a base hit moving Boa down to second. You can tell he's in pain. Incidentally, Ruthman hasn't had a complete game since September 23rd of 1983. Fastball out over the plate, ripped to center field. Dick Ruthman wasting no time. Man, that foot is really bothering him. And it can only get worse through the course of this ball game. Right. Now the better will be Bob Denier who popped up to the shortstop Rafael Santana on his first pitch first pitch of the ball game. Denier hitting 247 he's been bothered by a bad foot in fact he had a foot operation earlier this year. And the fastball for ball one. One one ball game two men away breaking ball check swing foul ball back into the stands one ball and one strike. The near another ball player acquired from the Philadelphia Phillies by Dallas Green. One and one the count. And the breaking ball and the count goes to two balls and one strike. At one point in the career they tried to make a switch hitter out of him. He batted so poorly from the left hand side it bothered his hitting on the right hand side. And another one out of the strike zone and that puts a count at three and one. Three and one to Bob Denier with Ryan Sandberg on deck. Davy Johnson on the right side of your screen, the manager of the New York Mets, flanked by Mel Stoudemire on Johnson's right side. Popped up into 
An area back at second base. Santana makes the call and the catch, and that does it. So in the inning, one run in the home run by Jody Davis. There were two hits in the inning, two men left on base, and the score at the end of one and a half innings, the Cubs won and the Mets won. Now here's a word from Matt. Dick Ruthven, as you could see, running to first base on that base hit, barely got there. So he is out of the ball game. The last time he had a complete game, Ruthven pitched against the Mets back on September 23rd in 1983 to pick up his last complete ball game, and he is out of this ball game, and Ron Meredith is in. Meredith has walked four, stuck out 12, and given up 21 hits in 17 and two-thirds innings. He comes in with a record of one win and no losses, and he has no saves. Meredith making his 11th appearance, and he will be allowed to throw as many pitches as he wants rather than the number eight pitches to warm up because of the injury to Ruthman taking Ruthman out of the ballgame. August 15th is Action Park Day at Shea. Your ticket stub from the August 15th Mets game entitles you to half price admission to Action Park throughout the 1985 season. So come to Shea and save at Action Park. Well, as we wait for Meredith to complete his warm up pitches, coming in here for the play by play, Tim McCarver. And Tim, on a night like this, you could get warm by combing your hair shaking hands with somebody <laughs> Howard Johnson will lead off this is going to affect Johnson and Davy Johnson both Howard and Davy because Howard Johnson is not hitting well from the right side as a matter of fact he's hitting 143 as a right handed batter and 241 as a left hand Dick Ruth and I would imagine will be taken for X rays that is usually the case when you're pounded that hard. And we'd like to remind you this copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the New York Mets and WRTV and is intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the New York Mets and WRTV is prohibited. Ron Meredith is 28 years old. He's ready to go. As you said, Ralph, he didn't he didn't take too long to warm up. Six feet, 175 pounds, and he was traded by the Atlanta Braves organization in 1984 for who else but Terry Leach. So Leach went to the Atlanta Braves. He was released from the Braves for the second time. He pitched for Tidewater last year, was 11 and three, and now he's back with the Mets. This is how Ruthven was struck by the line drive off the bat of Keith Hernandez. It hits him on the foot and then bounces up and gets him on the hand. The hand was all right, but the foot wasn't. There you see it hit his hand as it bounces off his foot. He picks up the ball and picks up the out at first base. Howard Johnson rips one to left field, and Gary Matthews is there and one away on one pitch in a 1 1 ball game. And the batter, Rafael Santana. Rafi batting 256. Number three, Rafael Santana. Ron Darling on deck. The Mets hit all six balls off Dick Ruthven back in the first inning. Very, very hard. Dykstra lined a one hopper to Boa. Backman single. Hernandez lined one off Ruthven's foot. And another liner off Meredith. So the Mets have their hitting slippers on, regardless of who's out there. Every ball they've hit's been a line drive. A carry carryover from last night when the Mets won their ball game 14 to 7. Here's the base hit by Rafael Santana. And the Mets with a base runner on and one out. And the pitcher Ron Darling coming up. Darling three for three in his last ball game, and no decision in which he faced Dick Ruthven and hit three liners off Ruthven. So we'll see whether Davy Johnson has any bunt here. And a good bunt. Meredith will have to go to first base to Sandberg covering, so the sacrifice successful. Last night's ball game, the key base hit was. When the pitcher Aguilera was being pressed so hard from first and third that he couldn't bunt, he swung away and doubled, and that got the Mets off to a five-run inning. Right there, the, the sacrifice worked. And the batter Lynn Dykstra. Dykstra hit it hard, but right at Larry Boa's first time up. Lynn entered.
the game batting 245. The Mets with four hits, the Cubs with three, one to one in the second. Breaking ball and a good stop by Jody Davis, 1 0 to Dykstra. Meredith did something there that gives away an early sign. D Jody Davis is either given the first or second sign, and we'll see the sequence after this nice play. And Jody Davis blocks that one nicely, holding the runner at second. Watch Meredith go into the stretch before he's completed. See that? That usually gives away the sign. That fastball is tight, 2 0. Oh. No intent there. The crowd is obviously upset, but there's no intent here. I'll tell you, that was right in there and uh, spin around by Dykstra to get out of the way. And incidentally, if you're trying to learn how to get away from a pitch being thrown at you, you have to turn toward the catcher, as Dykstra did right there. That's the way to get out of the way. Good fastball on the corner, two and one. third appearance for Meredith this year against New York he had no record last year in three games for the Cubs made his first appearance against the Mets last year on September 16th that was a game in which Daryl Strawberry hit a home run against Meredith curve ball and a check swing foul ball two and two to Lynn Dykstra Santana at second, two away. One to one ball game. Another curve ball is inside. Three and two. Wally Backman on deck. Another breaking ball. So if Meredith can throw a 2-1 and a 3-2 breaking ball to Wally Backman, you know what pitch he gets over best. Had a pretty good deduction there, Ralph. <laughs> Not a bad deduction, and a on-deck batter or anyone watching would have to put that in his memory bank or remember well when he come up to hit. What a job Wally Backman has been doing. Wally up over the 290 mark now with that base hit in the first inning. Also scored the only run of the game for the Mets. Mets have runners at first and second and two out. Breaking ball is high. One and oh. Either Jody Davis has an olive between his fingers or Meredith is a curveball pitcher. <laughs> he can't tuck those other fingers back in there, can he? Put that number two down there off an awful lot. Fastball. Fastball was in tight there. 2-0 to Backman. So Meredith running into control problems, and Jody wants to talk. Crossed him up. He put down curveball, and he threw a fastball. Mm -hmm. well, he still had the olive. <laughs> <laughs> well, Whack, was... Whacking him on the backside <laughs> might have gotten rid of that olive, huh? There's Billy Connors, the pitching coach of the Mets, sitting next to Jim Fry, pointing. Jim Fry pointing. And there's Popeye on the far side over there. Looked like right Buddha the sitting right there, did it? <laughs> Don Zimmer and Backman fouls it back on a free swing on a 2 0 count. Two and one to Wally Backman. Two out, two runners on, one to one game. Line drive right field, but Moreland is there and he makes the catch. So the Mets really hitting the ball well. Of all the balls that they have been allowed to hit, they have been smoking the ball, but they score no runs in the second. And strand two with one hit, and after two, it's one to one. Now here's a word from the good old guys. Ryan Sandberg leads it off against Ron Darling. Sandberg single and stole second his first time up. Entered the game batting 287, but was 0 for his last 15. So that streak's broken. And a curveball for a strike. 
Sandberg hit 192 in the month of April. Off to a terribly slow start after being the most valuable player in the National League in 1984. Lines this one foul. So Sandberg in the hole 0 for 0 and 2 on Ryan. What a year he had last year. Fourth in the National League in batting average, third in slugging percentage with a 520 slugging percentage. Not bad for a number two hitter. 331 stolen bases, one behind Dale Murphy, so he was second in total bases. And the split finger fastball gets it. Second strikeout for Darling. And the batter will be Gary Matthews. And right here, the off speed pitch. Sandberg geared up thinking it was a fastball and the split finger fastball a slower pitch gets him way off stride. Well that ball really had some downward movement on it. Gary Matthews flied to center his first time. Good curve ball. Another curve. 0 and 2 to Matthews. Fastball outside, so it's 1 and 2 to Gary. Gary had an outstanding year last year, hitting 291. Led National League players in game winning RBIs with 19. Curveball, check swing, fouled away. Now well, the National League scoreboard there, Ralph. Exposed three to one over the Pirates in top of the fourth. No score. Cardinals and Phillies in the bottom of the third. Braves and Giants later. Astros two. Padres one in the top of the third. First of two. Swing and a miss. Third strikeout for Ron Darling and two in a row. So Ron Darling appears to have it together here in the third. He goes back to the curveball and. Matthews unable to get close to it. Leon, Leon. Now, good to say, Darling now struck out his first two batters here in the third. Leon Durham struck out back in the first inning with Sandberg at second base. Leon batting 280. 1 and 0. Durham coming to the Cubs in the Bruce Souter trade, along with Ty Waller and Kenny Reitz. Swings and misses, one and one. Foul tip, says home plate umpire Steve Ripley. Breaking ball, grounded to Santana. Good play on the in-between hop, and he got him. So an easy inning for Ron Darling. As the Cubs go in order, and after two and a half, it's one to one. Now here's a word from Express Mail. Red Hot Philadelphia Phillies come to Shea for a four-game set beginning on Monday night. The Mets and Phils meet again on Tuesday at 7.35 and then on Wednesday. There will be a unique double header at 6 o'clock on Wednesday. The wives of the Mets will try to avenge an earlier loss this season against the wives of the Phillies. Uh -huh. That's a wives <laughs> softball game at 6 o'clock followed by the regular game at 7.35. The series and homestand ends on Thursday afternoon. A senior citizens contest at 135. That's the Philadelphia Phillies at Shea. Monday through Thursday highlighted by the wise softball game on Wednesday at 6. All right Ralph. Sounds like a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun for the ladies in Philadelphia. I have a chance to umpire third in that game. I don't think I got one thing right. Both sides were complaining. That's one game where you don't watch the ball. <laughs> Speaking of watching the ball, a guy who has watched it well over the last six weeks, Keith Hernandez. Man, what a hitter. 0 for 1 tonight, and a curveball is inside. 1 to 1 ball game. The Mets with four hits, and the Cubs with Jody Davis's 11th home run of the year. And three hits. 2 and 0 to Hernandez. Base hit right field. Tell you, with a little luck, Hernandez could be eight for his last eight. 
The all time record is 12 for 12 by Jim Bottomley but eight for eight could have been it as he's hit the ball in the nose eight straight times. And it's time to play Mets trivia. Speaking of guys hitting it on the nose Daryl Strawberry closes out what's been a terrific week and it's possible he could break his own home run record. Do you know who held the Met record for most homers by a left hander be before Daryl Strawberry. Left handed hitter that hit the most home runs before Daryl Strawberry. We'll tell you after Daryl hits. Swings and misses. One and one. You remember? And this ball is thrown away, and Sandberg backs up alertly. Had that ball gone to center, Hernandez could have gone to second. I did that one time. You talk about embarrassing. Threw the ball over the pitcher's head, the runner at first advanced. E2. Two and one. Never got hung up on it though. Well, I mean, you know, it was very embarrassing. I got <laughs> some guys get a metal block when they do that, and they can't get out of it. That's right. I made one of my best throws of the year, but unfortunately, nobody was running and nobody was covering. But the throw was right there. Two and two to Strawberry. Right on the target. <laughs> yeah, right. Right in the barrel. Oh, just missed it. Towering fly ball, Bob Dernier under it. He could have camped for 30 seconds under that one. Strawberry pops out after driving in the only run of the game for the Mets and the batter Danny Heap. All right, the left-handed hitter who held the Mets record for home runs by a left-hander before Daryl Strawberry. Ralph, he always wore a robe in the clubhouse. And his initials are J.M. And he has a cousin playing in this league for the Cincinnati, Cincinnati Reds. Cincinnati Reds. <laughs> Good going. John Milner. 23 home runs in 1973. Nice going, Ralph. Fastball misses to Danny Heap. He's single the first time up. One out, Hernandez at first. One and zero to Heap. Line drive, base hit to right. Hernandez rounded the bag and then kept the foot there as Moreland went right to second. But the Mets have runners at first and second and only one out in the batter, Clint Hurdle. Well, right here, Heap Norman does not play against left-hand pitching, but he hangs in there and lines it to right field. Moreland, a fine throwing right fielder, rips it in the second. There's a good swing. As he keeps back in there, keeps that shoulder closed, comes off and picks up the base hit. Shoulder closed and head right down on the ball. Hurdle lined hard to left, his only time up. Breaking ball, fair ball. Hernandez will score. Danny Heap's coming around. He's going to be held at third. Clint Hurdle picks up his seventh RBI of the year, and the Mets are on top. Two to one. Well, Clint Hurdle joins the crowd as he comes up with a big two base hit to drive in a run. This ball fair by about an inch. Oh. Right there. First base umpire Dutch Reddard indicated it was fair. Hernandez comes in the score easily. And at the last minute, he held up at third base by Buddy Harrelson. So Hurdle with an extra base hit for Hurdle. That is his fourth double of the year, and the Mets lead by a score two to one. And Howard Johnson will be walked intentionally for Rafael Santana. Johnson batting less than 140 as a right-hander this year, but Santana normally a right-handed hitter. A kind of a strange, right here. kind of a strange bit of strategy. They're trying to set up a force play at every base and a possible double play. Santana runs well. A move like that, if it doesn't work, can really lead to criticism. Uh, Howard Johnson, before that at bat, 70 or make that seven for 50 as a right-handed hitter this year. So the Cubs will play their infield and in double play depth. Jody Davis out to talk to Meredith. Looks like Jody and Ron are going over the signs, and of course, 
Davis telling Meredith, ball back to you, you come home. Nineteen for sixty over his last sixteen games. Santana has been red hot. He has a base hit his first time up. Curve ball is high. One and zero. Oh. Well, another stat that you can look at: Howard Johnson hitting 190 against the Cubs this year. Base is loaded. One out. Mets up 2-1. Fly ball right field. Marlin going to have a play at the plate. Here comes Heath. The throw, it's a good one. Safe at home. They're going to have an appeal play at third base. And third base umpire Ed Montague says no appeal, and you may have an argument here. Here comes Jimmy Fry out to argue with third base umpire Ed Montague. Cubs claiming that Heath left too soon. You can't leave before the ball hits the glove. Montague said no he did not leave and good base running on the play as the other runners tagged up and moved up. Here it is right here. Let's see Santana with the fly ball to fa fairly short right. Morland who does so well and the catch was made and he did not leave too soon. Didn't appear it did it. Danny slides in there under the tag of Jody Davis. Moreland, see how he gets in a position to throw. Nice throw. Nothing he can do, really. Just safe at home. Three to one, New York. Darling the batter. Line drive, but it's going to be foul. Well, the Mets with 20 hits in last night's game, and they have not let up. They have seven in the first two and two-thirds tonight. And a lot of line drives caught. Woo. Man. RBI number 21 for Santana is hurdle at third base. Johnson at second. Swings and misses. 0-2 to Darling. Phillies lead the Cardinals by a score of 3-0 after three. They have beaten Joaquin Andujar three times this year. They're 3-0 and against Andujar. He's only lost six games, and the Phillies have, beating, have beaten him thrice. <laughs> it's a nice little word, isn't it? Thrice. It fits. Oh, and two to Darling. Ronnie sacrificed his first time up. Another breaking ball. Really can't say enough about the base running of the Mets on that fly ball to right field. All runners tagging up and moving up on the throw to the plate. Yeah, if they cut it off and get the guy at second, so what? You got to run. Oh, it fairly well the center, but Deniers there, and he makes the catch. But the Mets score two. They did it on three base hits. The big blow, Clint Hurdle's fourth double of the year, and they stranded two. So after three innings of play, it's three to one, New York. Now here's a word from the good old guy. Tigers two, Indians nothing, bottom of the fifth. No score, Angels and Twins in the bottom of the first. Royals two, the Blue Jays nothing, top of the second. Top of the first, Orioles and Rangers underway. A's and Mariners later, and right now for the play-by-play, -play, Steve Sabrisky. Thanks a lot, Ralph. Keith Moreland leads it off. Two to one, New York leading as we go to the top of the fourth inning. Moreland grounded to short his first time up. And what a year he's had against Mets pitching. 359 coming into the game, including a home run. He's had a career against the Mets, 340. He's been a tough hitter for Mets pitchers to figure out. He's been tough against the whole league, though. He's a very consistent hitter, very proficient hitter. Two and one. That's really true. Jim Fry has said that the Cubs, of course, not scoring a lot of runs. And they have had their ups and downs this year, but he praises Keith Moreland as Mr. Consistency in that lineup. And a beautiful pitch from Darling right on the outside corner, two and two. That facial expression told it all as Darling put everything he had into that fastball. And here comes another heater. And Moreland hits it to center field, but Len Dykstra has plenty of room. One away. <laughs> Darling now has retired five in a row, striking out two of those five. 
And the batter Jody Davis who has accounted for the only Chicago run with his 11th homer of the year to left center field in the second inning. And Ralph Johnny Bench was telling me during the first three innings that he talked to Jody about his hitting prior to the game and gave him a little tip on getting his bat started. And Jody gets it started this time and pops it out of play strike one. Swing hard in case you hit it. <laughs> but John said that he was observing Jody and he just said you're having trouble aren't you. And Jody said yes. And he said well you've got to get the bat started. Get out there in front and try to hit some home runs in batting practice. There's quite a stat right there. Good curveball. 0 and 2. 3,500 strikeouts for Tom Seaver. Paul Molitor became the man of record for his 3,500 strikeout. Tom, of course, going for victory number 301 tonight. 1 and 2. Milwaukee leading one nothing and there is the St. Louis Cardinals score Philadelphia three and Cardinals nothing this one is gone I'm telling you that is high deep and out of here Jody Davis hits it to the back of the bullpen two home runs in a row and what is Johnny Bench saying now a little tip from Johnny Bench <laughs> Jody Davis is obviously going to have to give Bench some of the credit. Homer number 12, and the game is tied again. So now it's three to two, I should say, the Mets leading. Now Jody really got all of this one, and it's his third home run against the Mets this year. It's a breaking ball, off-speed pitch, a split-finger fastball, as a matter of fact, and there was no doubt about it. Well, it's not quite that easy, but a great hitter can pick up a lot of things that people should do that they don't do to help another hitter. Now it's Ron Say who fly to center in the second inning. And he takes a ball low and away. Say with only one home run in his last 51 games and two RBIs in the last 47. Ball two. There you see what's that's almost happened. hard to believe because say has been such a consistent hitter. It's this ball well to right field strawberry back near the track and he will make the catch just short of the wall two out. So two long fly ball outs and a home run here in the fourth inning off Ron Darling. Darling now has given up 16 home runs. And 165 plus innings of work, 166 innings now. Larry Boa walked his first time up, as you see. Hitting 246, no homers, 13 RBIs. Well, there's a secret in giving up a lot of home runs. Popped up. You better tell us quickly because this one's going to come down. Do it with no one on base. That is correct. One run on one hit Jody Davis's solo home run it did come with no one on base the Mets still lead it three to two in the middle of the fourth and now here's a word from Budweiser. On hand as we go to the bottom of the fourth and Len Dykstra the top of the order leading it off for the Mets takes a ball from Ron Meredith Dykstra 0 for 1 plus a walk grounded to short back in the first inning. And that's out of play and it's one and one. Meredith working in relief of Dick Ruthman who pitched only one inning. So far Meredith through two innings has given up two runs on four hits. He has not struck out a batter and he has walked two one of those intentionally. And right now he is the pitcher of record record on the losing side. Dykstra tries to bunt pops it up Jody Davis with a play can't quite get there. So it's one and two. Well, your initial reaction as a catcher on a bunt attempt is to move forward and come out. And when the ball is bunted in back of you, you have to make that stop and turn, and that cost him some time. There he moves forward. Now he spins around and can't get back to it. It's also not easy to run with all that gear on. A lot of good effort by Jody. One ball, two strikes on Dykstra. 
Didn't bother Seattle Slew any. <laughs> Had the two extra legs. <laughs> Hitting the hole and under the glove of Ryan Sandberg. Sandberg couldn't quite get there, and we'll see how they score it. I would imagine it'll be a base hit. Well, at Wrigley Field, this ball would have been so slow by the tall grass they keep in that ballpark that you could have gotten to it. But right here, the grass is short, and it's greener on the other side for Len Dykstra as he comes up with a base hit. Eighth hit of the game for New York. Dykstra on first with nobody out for Wally Backman, who's one for two. Wally singled to right and scored in the first inning and lined hard to right fielder Keith Moreland in the second. Dykstra with 10 stolen bases will be kept close. The Mets 21 over 500 and the best since 59-37 record a little over a year ago. And a good bunt by Backman. Meredith knocks it down. Got him at first base on a very close play. Boy, I want to see it again, but what a great recovery by Meredith. This is really an athletic play. He scrambles around and throws from his knees. It is close, but they do nip him at first. Here's another angle. Meredith just getting his glove in the ball made a good play and now he makes it even better as he throws from his knees and it was extremely close. It'll go as a sacrifice. Dykes for moving down to second even though Backman was bunting for a base hit and it brings up Keith Hernandez. Keith with a single to right and a run scored in the third inning. He's one for two and he takes a strike. Meredith as you said Ralph did a great job to knock that ball down because if he had not knocked it down it's a base hit all the way. One and one to keep. Hernandez has driven in 34 runs in his last 34 games to go with all the other unbelievable statistics he's put together in the last six weeks or so. Two and one. Keith is betting 514 with runners in scoring position in his last 32 games. And he's got one there right now. Good pitch from Meredith. And it's two and two. Keith looking fastball right there got fooled by the curve. He Singled in the third inning off a breaking pitch by Meredith when he led off the third later on scored. One out Dykstra at second base Mets leading three to two here in the top of the fourth. Fouled out of play and it's still two and two. That time he got the fastball and he was looking for the breaking ball. He had to jam it off with that late swing and when good hitters are hitting that's what happens they can foul off those tough pitches. You saw Strawberry on deck. Good hitters have a tendency to hit those balls out of play. Bad hitters put those balls in play. Little bleeders back to the pitcher's mound. Or I should say hitters who aren't going well. You don't have to be a bad hitter to do that. Still two and two to keep. Popped up out of play behind home plate. That bat comes with a hitter attached. Hernandez checking the bat for a possible crack. But apparently it's all right. He's like a violin player. He's fine tuning that instrument. <laughs> and he can play it. In the dirt, three and two.
Well, after looking at Meredith throughout this ball game, he has been throwing breaking balls as his main pitch, the pitch that he has been trying to get the hitters on. Three and two here, you'd have to have in your back of your mind that he would go to that breaking ball. It's very difficult, though, to look for one pitch when you have a count of two strikes on you. And he gets a fastball lined at Sandberg. No, they do not double Dykstra at second, even though Boa momentarily argues a little bit with the second base umpire, Fred Brocklander. So Hernandez hit another rope for an out. There it is again. He hits it on the trademark. It's not a sharp line drive, but it's hit hard. And good base running by Dykstra to get back before the play at second base and now Strawberry is going to be walked intentionally to get to D Danny Heap. This will be the second intentional walk Meredith has issued the third walk overall. Howard Johnson was walked in the third inning intentionally. Well Jim Fry had the option of walking Hernandez to pitch to Strawberry. Or pitching to Hernandez and walking Strawberry, and he so far has guessed right. Going into that deal, though, I'd have to go the other way. I would have too, with Hernandez more of a contact hitter. But I guess Jimmy's figuring Strawberry more of a threat to hit a three-run home run if he puts Hernandez on. Well, Danny Heap's been no piker tonight either. Two for two, as you see, 409 over the last 14. Including tonight, and he has a run scored to go with his two base hits, and he takes a strike. The Mets have been pretty tough on left handed pitching, even with Hernandez and Strawberry, two key men being left handed hitters. The Mets are 27 and 15 against left handed pitching this year. Fouled out of play, 0 and 2. And you could take that even farther down the line because both Howard Johnson and Wally Backman are much better left handed hitters than they are right handed hitters. Very true. And Hojo has played a lot more than Ray Knight, the other New York third baseman, a right handed hitter. Two out, two on, and an 0 2 count to Heat. That'll be out of play down the left field line. And a souvenir among this great crowd. Another 50,000 here and near sellouts anticipated tomorrow afternoon and Sunday afternoon. But there are seats available for both those games. Good and tomorrow. Again fouled away. Sunday it'll be Ed Lentz in the mound for the Mets against Derek Botello. I think it'd be only Botello's second major league start. First was against the Mets when Strawberry hit the three home runs in the ball game. Two off of Botello. Meredith the first in time, and the inning is over. So the Mets are turned away in spite of two, or rather a base hit and a walk. Two left here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Still three to two New York. And we're back after this for Royal Crown Bowl with New York out in front three to two. Ron Darling through the first four innings has allowed two runs to Jody Davis <laughs> two solo home runs by Davis accounting for Chicago's runs a total of four hits he has struck out three and walked one so Meredith who has no batting average he has only been up one other time this year to stand in there. He has a batting average is just zero. <laughs> That's right. If he had no at bats, he wouldn't have any batting average. But he's 0 for 1 on the year. And then the count 1 and 1. Ronnie, after going 4 and 0 over his previous four starts, is 0 and 2 in his last three starts with one no decision. Meredith does him a favor by hitting one out of the strike zone out of play one and two Darling had 12 no decisions last year as you look at Meredith the better he was second to Steve Carlton who had 13 and when he got off this year to a couple of no decisions he said there's something in my 
This position that portends no decisions. See you later. Strike three called. Darling picks up his fourth strikeout. And the leadoff batter Bob Denier, who has twice popped out to shortstop Rafael Santana. Denier has not played much against the Mets this year, as earlier in the season he was out with that foot operation. He's two for six overall, including his 0 for 2 tonight. Curveball way outside, ball one. Fastball ripped to left field for a base hit. Heap over to cut it off. Denier runs very well, and he's going to try for two and make it easily. Well, he made a fine stop out in left field. As he made the pivot to throw, he slipped, and he couldn't get anything on the ball. Let's take a look at it again. Denier with that outstanding speed. So Heap knows he has to hurry, and he makes this fine play to get to it. Now he slips, and he can't make the good throw. Actually fell down. 11th double of the year for Denier, who's at second base representing the tying run with one out. And the hitter will be Ryan Sandberg. Ryan, one for two, single to center in the first and stole his 32nd base of the year. He struck out in the third inning. High fastball fouled straight back for strike one. Well, he had a good swing at that one. When you foul one right straight back, you know you were close. Yeah, it's, that's very true. You can tell what you did with your swing by your foul balls. If you foul it to the left side, you're out in front. If you foul it off the right side, you are behind it. So you just off your foul balls. But if you miss the ball, it's a little hard to adjust. Dernier bouncing around at second bothered Darling a little bit. So Ronnie stepped off momentarily. And it's low. One and one. Sandberg now with two hits in his last 21 at bats. Breaking ball inside. Sandberg almost did something last year no player has ever done. 20 doubles, 20 triples, 20 home runs. He had 19 home runs. And he had a shot to do it. He didn't hit a home run, I don't think, the last week of the season, or the last three games anyway. Rope, base hit left field. Denier will score, and it'll roll all the way to the wall. The game is tied at three as Sandberg picks up another double. His 19th of the year. And it's three to three and for Sandberg his 40th RBI. Well, after that first good swing Sandberg comes back with another good swing and hits it right up the alley. And the two base hit ties up the ball game as he plays it off. And now the batter coming up will be Gary Matthews. Matthews 0 for 2. Line to shallow center and struck out. And he takes the ball low and away. The Sarge has not had much success against New York this year. He came into the game hitting only 182 against the Mets. But he skies this one deep into right center field. Dykstra gets there, however. Sandberg tags and will move over to third base on the play. Nice good, play. Good base running by Sandberg. Dykstra, after making the catch, fell down. Of course, it has been raining around here, and if he had not gotten up in a hurry, Sandberg could have come around to score. Dykstra right here trying to brace the stop, and the wet grass comes out from underneath him, and Sandberg crosses over to third and then was held up by Zimmer at third base. So two out. For Leon Durham, who is 0 for 2, the bull has struck out and grounded to short. 
and a strike at the knees. There's the line score: three six and zero for the Cubbies and three eight and zero for the Mets. Two out, top of the fifth. Fastball fouled away. 0 and two. Up to this inning, the Cubs have left only three on. The Mets have left two on in every inning so far that they have batted. And in a tight ball game, boy, that's one thing that can really come back to haunt you. Again, fouled away and still 0 and 2. And somebody made a great play <laughs> with the net. Takes all kinds. <laughs> well, at least he got to use it. If he's going to bring it, he will get a chance to use it. Durham just recently back in the lineup after being out with back spasms, missed the series against the Mets in Chicago last week. Breaking ball, strike three. Darling picks up his fifth strikeout. However, a pair of doubles score one run to tie it here in the fifth. 3-3 three, three in the middle of the fifth. And now here's a word from the Bell Atlantic Yellow Pages. Squad at four and Robert Urich in Vegas at five. Don't miss the action beginning weeknights at four here on Channel 9. And we're going back to the action now with Ralph Kiner. And hurdling right back to the action with <laughs> Clint Hurdle as he takes a swing at a fastball. What a segue, I'll tell you. Hurdle in this game with a double and a run batted in and two times up. Gary Carter being rested. And the fastball on the mound. Ron Meredith. Meredith came in the game in the second inning, gave up two runs in the third. Cubs came back to tie with solo runs in the fourth and fifth. The Mets led 1 nothing after one. It was tied by the Cubs in the second. And the one two pitch. A ball and counted two balls and two strikes. When did you see Meredith and Davis on that pitch? They thought they had hurdles struck out. Their body language told it all. And now it goes to three and two. St. Louis has come back against Philadelphia. The Cardinals lead four to three, top of the fifth inning. And a line drive to center field. The near can't get it. And he makes a good pickup off that first hop to save an extra base hit. Hurdle now two for three in the game. Clint just reaches out and wrists it into center field. He is really strong and you can tell by the way he hit that ball and I think it fooled the a little bit. He almost played it into an extra base hit but recovered in time. So the Mets get another hit in this game. That is their 10th base hit. And it brings up Howard Johnson who has walked and also has flat out the left. And the first pitch a breaking ball for ball one. Johnson hitting 190 against the Cubs coming into this ball game. And there's a line drive to center field. Hurdle going to second base and holding there as Denier comes in quickly to pick that ball up. Now he throws it away, but it's backed up by the pitcher. So back to back singles. And this is a frozen rope. Hojo hits it, even though it's down and away, right on a line, right back up the middle. You see Bill Robinson talking to him about that, how he stayed with that ball, hit it out near the end of the bat, but a solid single to center. Runners at first and second, and no one out. Tie ball game at three, and Santana the batter. Santana hitting in front of the pitcher, Ron Darling, and the Mets have no one throwing in the bullpen in this 3 3 ball game. 
And Durham is already looking for the bunt. I don't figure that. They don't really think that Santana is going to sacrifice for the pitcher, do they? That's the way they're setting up. They're looking for the bunt. I find it hard to believe. I, I just wouldn't anticipate Davy Johnson doing it, but well, they're going to do it. That means that Darling is considered a fine hitter. And he is not a bad hitter. No, he can put the bat on the ball, but it is unusual. And we'll see if it's still going to be on. Warren Brewster are out in the bullpen for the Cubs. And now Meredith wants to talk to the veteran Ron Say. In similar situations with runners at first and second and looking for the sacrifice, the Cubs have not used the rotation play, meaning that the shortstop covers at third base with the third baseman charging. And where Larry Bow is playing right now, I would anticipate they're not using it here either. And Santana hits away. It's a deep fly ball to left field, tagged up at second as Hurdle. Matthews in good throwing position. Hurdle tagging now going to second base and beating the tag is. Howard Johnson fine base running by Howard Johnson as he goes in the second after the catch and a good play by Matthews throwing the second rather than the third it was close at second base well what this does is it accomplishes the same thing as a successful sacrifice would have as both runners move up on the out Santana hit it well enough for hurdle to advance and Matthews chose to go to second when he saw Hojo going to second. But Howard Johnson runs very well. He has above average speed, and I think it surprised Boa a little bit. Not only that Matthews threw there, but when he turned around and Johnson was there. Or Sandberg, I think. Sandberg say, was there. Took the throw. But what made that play was Johnson tagging up when he saw Hurdle tag up. When you see the runner in front of you tag up, you have to tag up. I wonder if Johnson is hurt or if he's just checking things out with Harrelson. Jim Fry has come out to the mound. And the infield has had a conference while we were showing you the replay. But Johnson appears to be all right. It looked like he might have been favoring his hamstring a little bit, but he's all right. Well, the Cubs like to use a squeeze play, sacrifice, suicide squeeze play. So they are setting up. And what that conference was about would be that they want to guard against the possibility of the suicide squeeze. And the infield is in all the way around. And the breaking ball over a called strike. Darling is 0 for 1 with a sacrifice in this ball game. Ron has had 12 hits this year, but he has not driven in a run. He leads Met pitchers in base hits. He has one more than Dwight Gooden. High ball game at three. The Mets with runners at second and third. One man out. We're in the bottom half of the fifth inning. And the count goes to one ball and one strike. Cubs won a ball game in extra innings, 14th inning, as a matter of fact, against the Cardinals just prior to the Mets playing the Cubs at Wrigley Field. And another curveball in the count, one ball and two strikes. They used the squeeze play against the Mets in a ball game the Mets won in extra innings. Squeeze play putting the Cubs up on the Mets in the Bottom of the eighth inning. So if you live by the squeeze, you look for the squeeze. Two and two the count. When the Cubs won their ball game against the Cardinals in the 14th, they squeezed on a two-out situation with a count three and two. Bounced over the mound. Sandberg has a play at the plate. Hurdle is hung up. Now the rundown play, and Darling goes on down to second base. The ball is dropped in the tag. Who did he tag? And he tagged Hurdle, who does not have possession of the bag at third. Hurdle losing possession that goes to Johnson, but Hurdle staying in the rundown long enough to keep the situation the same. Runners at second and third. And that's what you want to do. And you've got to try to go home regardless on this kind of a play with no with only one out or less than two out or even with two out in certain instances. <laughs> I love this. Now watch. I mean, see, Jody dropped the ball, and he wasn't sure if he tagged him or not. He doesn't know who that bag belongs to, but once you leave it, it belongs to the runner going there. Davis picked the ball up again and again, tagged Hurdle just to be sure. Now with two men out, the runner still at second and third. Dykstra is the batter, and it's strike one. <laughs> Back. 
Fastball missed, strike two. Dykstra in this ball game has a base hit and two times up. He also has walked. And now with a two strike count. And it's lined in the left center field. Might be extra bases. Going back is Denier, and he makes a great one handed catch. And that ends the inning. So Dykstra with a drive in the deep left center field. Saving two runs in the process. Lenny hit this ball a ton, but boy, Denier can run. And he just outran the ball and got back to make the catch. So He's in the inning, as you look at the replay one more time, the Mets no runs, two hits, and again they leave two. They have left ten men on base through the first five innings. And the score at the end of five, the Mets three and the Cubs three. Now here's a word from Exxon. Three, the Mets have left ten men on base, and eight of the ten have been in scoring position. And make our day. Here in the top of the sixth inning, the leadoff batter will be Keith Moreland, who is 0 for 2. Ron Downing on the mound has given up three runs on six hits while striking out five. He has walked one. And he'll be working to Keith Moreland, Jody Davis, and Ron Say as his first three batters. And that's strike one. And a split fingered fastball or fork ball. Way inside, one ball, one strike. Keith Moreland, one of the many major leaguers turned out by Coach Cliff Gustafson at the University of Texas. Also a football player at the University of Texas. And a good one until he got hurt. Got hurt on the opening kickoff, didn't he? In his yep. last year at the Texas University Oklahoma Texas. game. Broke a wrist. One and two. Moreland batting here in the top of the sixth inning. And it's hit out the deep left field, way back. It's going, going. It is gone. Goodbye. Keith Moreland putting the Cubs on top. With his ninth home run and the Cubs lead by a score of four to three. Ron Darling has now allowed three home runs in this game and 17 on the year. All three home runs solo home runs. Two to Davis and now one to Moreland. Keith picks up RBI number 60. Well, you talk about in this wheelhouse. He hit it far and deep. Now Jody Davis had homered his first two times up singles in the right field as the Cubs get it going. Jody Davis on the first pitch after Moreland's home run with a single to right center field. He's now three for three in the National League. In the seventh, Montreal over Pittsburgh four to one. In the sixth, Philadelphia now trailing St. Louis five to three. Later, it'll be Atlanta at San Francisco in the sixth inning. Houston leading San Diego four to three. They will play a second game later, and also later Cincinnati at Los Angeles. So a runner at first base and no one out, and the batter for the Cubs, Ron Say. Ron is 0 for two. Say with 13 home runs, 29 RBIs. I'll tell you, if all it takes is a conversation with Johnny Bench to get you going like Jody Davis is going tonight, Johnny might get a job as a hitting instructor somewhere. I think he makes a little more money doing other things than <laughs> hitting instructors. <laughs> One strike to count. Well, that means he could afford to take that job on the side, you see. Moonlight a little bit. Yes. And a good curveball, but it's just outside in the count. One ball and one strike. Cubs came into this game in fourth place nine games back of the Mets that's leading the Cardinals by a half game Montreal by five and the good curveball in the count one and two Ron Darling's season is somewhat paralleling last year where he had a great first half and a shaky second half came into this game with a record of ten and four. 
Lifetime record in the major leagues 23 wins and 16 losses. Back to the curveball, and it's two and two. Darling has had three complete games this year. Two of them have been shutouts. And the count fills out the three balls and two strikes. Three and two, the runner at first base. Not a very fast runner. The catcher, Jody Davis. And accident in the bullpen for the Mets, Doug Sisk and Tom Gorman throwing. Davis running with a pitch, the ball grounded out to third. No chance for a force play at second base, so they have to go to first base for the out. And once again, the Cubs have a runner in scoring position. Coming around to the plate. And a good move on the part of manager Jim Fry to start the runner, Jody Davis and Ron Say. Neither one run well at all, and so. In an effort to avoid the possible easy double play, they started the runner and it paid off. Mets fans, you can have it all with Michelob Light. Super premium taste in a less filling beer. Now the batter is Larry Boa. Boa 0 for 1 with a walk. Dykstra in center field way too deep for Boa. Boa has no power left-handed. And he takes the pitch for ball one. Strawberry in right field playing a very good position right field but Dykstra too deep and heap too deep Clint Hurdle talking with Ron Darling Clint doing the catching tonight Gary Carter being rested as well as George Foster it was Darling that asked Hurdle to come out so they were not together. Remember the runner at second, giving a series of signs, you better be together. And a strike call. One ball, one strike. Ball with 13 RBIs. Earlier in the year, Boa had problems with manager Jim Fry about whether he should be playing or not. Fry didn't think so. Wild pitch. And the runner moves up. So Hurdle crossed up. He was looking for the curveball, and the fastball sailed right over the top of his glove. Well, as we just mentioned, you've got to be sure that you're together when you're using a sequence of signs with the runner at second base. And they obviously were not. Darling had asked Hurdle to come out, and he did. And two pitches later, Hurdle obviously completely fooled. Well, you don't know who made the mistake, the pitcher or the catcher there. But now the Mets will have to play their infield in. Runner at third base, Jody Davis, with one man out. Cubs leading four to three in the top of the sixth inning. Oh, a good bunner, so you have to be well aware that he can squeeze. And Darling. Anticipating a possible suicide squeeze. Trying to catch Jody Davis off at third. And that one a call strike. Two and two the count. Oh, I thought the pitch was inside. He's doing his thing there. Steve Ripley, the home plate umpire. Now they're bringing Dykstra in a little bit in center field. So Heap also has shortened up out in left field. Ground ball to Backman at second base. He makes a fine play and a difficult hop. And Jody Davis has to stay at third. Good play by Wally Backman. And an important play as well as it is the second out of the inning. And now it's going to take a base hit. Or some unusual play in order for Davis Ooh. to score. Look at that short hop, boy. And Backman really stayed with it, coddling that ball and cushioning it into the body. Boy, you, you play this ball with brick hands and it's going to bounce right off you. Nice play by Wally. Boy, you don't know how tough that play was till you have to make it. So now 
Davis still at third but with two men out and the batter is Meredith and again you have to be well aware that Meredith might be in a bunning situation and he swings at the first pitch strike one on the foul ball. Meredith struck out looking his first time up. Cubs leading four to three not going to their bullpen. Yeah I'm a little surprised I know that their pitching staff is a little bit beleaguered with injuries and whatnot but I'm a little surprised that Meredith's hitting for himself here. Well you'd have to know what Jim Fry thinks about his middle relief it's too early to go to Lee Smith his big man. He had Bruce Starr up earlier but no one in the bullpen now. I wonder if there were less than two out if he would have had Meredith hit probably would have. In other words probably would have gone to a pinch hitter. Ground ball out to Keith Hernandez who digs it out. Wins the race to the bag and that will do it. One run on the home run by Keith Moreland. Man left a third on two hits and the score at the end of five and a half innings. The Cubs four the Mets three. Now here's a word. He's now seen at a new time weeknights at seven right here on Channel nine. Have right here in Channel Nine, the bottom half of the sixth inning to come your way. The Cubs leading four to three. As you look at Don Zimmer and Yosh Carano, Yosh, a clubhouse boy for the Cubs, he has been with Mr. Wrigley's operation back in 1946. In fact, when Wrigley sold the ball club to the Chicago Tribune, Yosh was guaranteed a job for life. He's from Boyle Heights, California, right outside of Los Angeles. Japanese clubhouse boy and one of the best liked men that has ever been in the game of baseball. His brother Nobi works for the Dodgers in the clubhouse position. Keep it in the family. Tell you one thing, if Yosh ever wrote a book about ball players, it would be a bestseller. <laughs> He's seen them Boy. in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. Seen them at their worst and at their best. <laughs> he can tell some <laughs> tales. <laughs> I tried to get him to go on television. He won't go on. Be <laughs> <He> X-rated. <laughs> Wally Beckman to lead off, and he takes the first pitch for ball one. Wally in this game one for two with a sacrifice tried to beat out a bunt was thrown out in an outstanding play by Meredith but he did move the runner up and a line shot it's a fair ball Backman on his way to second so Wally doubles the lead off the sixth inning man is Wally in a groove his 11th double of the year he's hit three ropes tonight including or rather in addition to the successful sacrifice smoked it down the line and Wally, who has not had a great deal of success as we mentioned earlier hitting right handed showed no signs of having any problems that time Mets have their 11th base hit of the game their seventh off of Meredith and the batter will be Keith Hernandez who has had one hit and three times up. Keith literally knocked Ruthven, the starting pitcher, out of the box with a line drive that hit Ruthven on the foot. Keith was thrown out of the play. And it's a strike call. Good fastball from Meredith. Keith batting 403 in his last 32 ball games. And with a runner in scoring position, Keith has hit 514. Ground ball in the hole and a base hit. Backman will come in to score. The throw by Moreland is way late. Hernandez trying to go to second base and he is thrown out. So a base running mistake by Keith Hernandez, but he did drive in the tie run. It's now a 4-4 ball game. Keith hits it hard on the ground and Sandberg can't get there. Backman scores easily. Now the throw from Moreland is way up in front of the plate and that enables Davis to run up, catch it on the fly and catch Hernandez in between. When Keith saw that the ball was going to go through to the plate, he went on down to second. But a good play by Jody Davis to knowing that he did not have a play on Backman at the plate, 
run up and catch the ball on the fly, and that enabled him to get Keith easily. So it's tied at four, and the batter's Daryl Strawberry. Strawberry with a one-strike count, and this ball is fouled out of play. Strawberry in this game has had a base hit, had drove in a run in the first inning. He also was walked intentionally in the fourth inning, and he has flied out to center field. So he's one for two tonight. And the fastball, and the count one ball and two strikes. And Darrell pops it up. Ron Say is making the call. Jody Davis also making the call. They run together, but Say makes the catch. So Strawberry is out. Two men away, and the batter will be Danny Heat. Well, with a crowd here tonight of in excess of 50,000, and then, and then the noise that they can generate, Davis and Say, even though they were close to each other, probably had a hard time hearing who was calling and the pitcher should have been calling for someone to take it. Pitcher could be over there taking one of the guys out of the play. <laughs> so Davis saved by say and we're going to have a pinch hitter for Danny Heap It's going to be George Foster. Danny did a good job anticipating a right-hander pitching. He had a single off the right-hander Ruthven and a single off the left-hander Meredith. He was two for three. And as you see, George had 16 homers and 57 RBIs now. He and Strawberry tied for the club lead in home runs with 16 apiece. As a pinch hitter, George is 0 for 3 this year with one pinch hit RBI. So Foster to hit against the left-hander. Foster tied for the club lead in home runs with 16 with Harold Strawberry, and he takes the first pitch for ball one. Goes after a bad pitch, and the count one ball and one strike. Ron Meredith came into this ball game back in the second inning. He has been hit hard, but he's still in. Mets have had nine hits off of him, make, making a total of three runs off of him. One ball, two strikes to Foster. George working on a six game hitting streak over which he has hit 435. He's hit 327 over the last 31 games. And he holds up. Did he hold up in time? Yes, he did, said first base umpire Dutch runner. So the count two balls and two strikes. Here's a replay of it. A high fastball. Now the breaking ball grounded to Bud Harrelson, the third base coach. Fine shortstop in the pass for the Mets. <laughs> Give it to somebody that can hold on to it. There you go. <laughs> Buddy always makes it a habit to toss a ball into the stands when he gets one down there. Now the count at three and two. Mets have a left-hand batter, Clint Hurdle, on deck. If Foster gets on, they might go to Carter as a pinch hitter. And it's ball four, so Foster walks. Mets have the go-ahead run at first base, and Hurdle's going to bat. Fourth walk issued by Meredith. Two of them were intentional passes. And Hurdle tonight is two for three, and both of his base hits have come against the left-hander Meredith. He lined out against the right-hander Ruffin. Hurdle doubled in the third off Meredith and singled up the middle, and this one is fouled away.
Tie ball game at four. Mets with Foster the runner at first, two men out. We're in the bottom half of the sixth inning. One strike count to Clint Hurdle. And this one hit high in the air to center field. Bob Denier is there. That retires the side. Mets score one run on the base hit by Keith Hernandez. They had two hits and a walk, so one man left on base. And the score at the end of six. The Cubs four and the Mets four. Now here's a word. Was the new pitcher for New York, five and four, with nine saves and a 2.99 ERA. Rogers' 35th appearance. He's worked 78 and a third, walked 25, struck out 49. He's allowed just six home runs, and he is working in relief of Ron Darling, who pitched the first six and leaves again with no decision as we're tied 4-4. And as we go to the top of the seventh inning, back into work the last three with me, a man who could catch all those. Great pitchers in a rocking chair, Tim McCarver. I don't know about in a rocking chair, but a lot of great pitchers make catchers look good. Johnny Bench was just in the booth during the break, and he's been in and out of the booth all night long, and he said uh, he could handle Dwight Gooden. <laughs> he'd have been a good catcher with Dwight Gooden pitching. Of course, John would have been great with anybody pitching, but the point was that pitchers make catchers look good. Those guys have made a visit to the souvenir stand, haven't they? <laughs> they spent a couple dollars here tonight. Yeah. Bob Dernier leads it off, top of the seventh inning, four to four. A slugfest and a low scoring slugfest at that. Fastball is high to Bob Dernier, 1 0. Oh. Dernier, 1 for 3 with a run score. Fastball low, 2 0. Oh. Ron Darling went six. Charged with four earned runs on eight hits, struck out five, walked one, and gave up three home runs. There's a strike from McDowell. Dernier doubled in the fifth and scored a run on an RBI double by Ryan Sandberg. Ground ball is short. Santana, he slipped when he threw the ball, but still gets him. A loose turf out there, one away. Well, we saw Danny Heap slip on a play, and then in center field, Len Dykstra slipped and fell, and now Santana's back foot goes out from under him, but still is able to nip the speedy Bob Dernier by just about a half a step. Raphael with that quick release, and you can see his feet, his other foot almost went out from underneath him, too, but he completed the play. Guess you could say that plant foot was planted, huh? <laughs> Uprooted. Uh huh. <laughs> Brian Sandberg, the batter, he's two for three on the night. Make that three for four. So Sandberg entering the game 0 for 15 and 1 for his last 19 is three for four. So I guess you could say he's out of it. Yeah, and he has really hit the ball on line for the most part in this ball game. He did strike out in the third inning. But he looks like he's out of it. And Johnny Bench didn't even talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> Sandberg obviously a threat to run. He has 31 stolen bases. Pilford 32 in the 84 season. Gary Matthews 0 for 3 on the night. Two pretty good players. The MVP and the backup MVP. Or runner up I should say. Sandberg had 31 stolen bases coming in. He stole his 32nd, matching last year's total back in the first inning. Mm. Well, this is the second time the Mets fail that they have had somebody picked off here. And let's see. Oh, yeah. That's that's less less close, if that's the proper term, than the previous call. On both occasions, the replay showed that Darling had to picked off. This time, McDowell had it picked off. Another throw over there. He's back easily. Four to four game. The Cubs with nine hits. The Mets with 12. And the Mets have stranded 11 through six innings. 1 and 0 to Gary Matthews. One thousand runs scored. That will make him one of 16 active players to have a thousand runs. And Gary fouls this one off. So it's one and one to the Sarge. Well, the Cardinals 
still leading five to three after coming from behind. Now in the bottom of the eighth in Philadelphia, the Phillies had led that game three to nothing early. And those Pirates have been out a long time against Bryn Smith and the Expos in the top of the eighth. Six to two, Montreal was leading Pittsburgh. Montreal entered the action five games back. The Cardinals a half game back in the National League East. Two and one to Matthews. Matthews and Bob Dernier, two of the reasons that the Cubs won the National League East by six games last year. MVP of the National League Championship Series for the National League champion Phillies in 83. There goes Sandberg. The pitch is high, and again, Hurdle is late. That footwork so important for a catcher. Hurdle certainly has the arm, but his inexperience showed on both those throws. He was back on his heels here, and he wasn't able to come out firing. He made a great throw, but it left his hand too late. See, Clint has a lot to do before he can get rid of that ball, and by that time, Sandberg's easily in at second, even though he made a perfect throw. Pitch was a ball, so it's three and one to Gary Matthews. Sandberg at second, representing the go-ahead run. 33rd stolen base of the season. And in his second tonight. <laughs> Slider and a beauty. Matthews, I think, thought this ball was high, but Steve Ripley didn't. 3-2 to Gary Matthews. Leon Durham on deck. Another slider misses. So the dangerous Durham will be the batter with runners at first and second and one away. He's especially dangerous against a guy like McDowell because to be effective, McDowell must pitch down and Durham a good low ball hitter. Leon has struck out twice and grounded to short. Four to four game. have a good cut at that sinker. So it's 0 and 1 to Roger McDowell. Here's a great baseball matchup. Roger McDowell a sinker baller against a good low ball hitter. Strength to strength. And Durham hits it hard to left and Foster's there. What a rocket that was. Woo! Two out. Now they were going to put the definition or a picture next to the definition of a line drive in the dictionary. They should take a picture of this ball. I mean, that was a for a while a rising tracer. Mm, like some out of Star Wars. Laser beam. Keith Moreland, the batter, he homered his last at bat. His ninth homer of the year, he's one for three. RBI number 60 for Bobby Keith Moreland. And a fastball misses. One and oh to Keith Moreland. Well, the right field, way back, but Strawberry is there on the warning track. So Moreland gave it a ride, but Strawberry caught up with it. No runs to hit and two left for the Cubs. Man, there have been a lot of guys left on base tonight. And after six and a half, four to four. Now here's a word from Garcia Swing line. 
And fans, we want to remind you that the revised edition of the Mets 1985 yearbook can be purchased through the mail by sending a check or money order for $5 payable to the Mets to Promotion Graphics, Department M, as in money, 160 Varick Street, New York, 10013. The yearbook is 112 pages of full-color photographs for your favorite Mets, your and it includes a special 16-page feature, the history of New York National League championship teams. So to get your 1985 Mets yearbook today, send a check or a money order for $5 payable to the Mets to Promotion Graphics, Department M, 160 Varick Street, New York, New York, 10013. And the Cubs have a new pitcher, Warren Brewstar is in there. Ron Meredith did a fine job giving up three three runs and five innings of work. But the Mets stranded nine through his five innings of work. And there's a line on Warren Brewstar. Two and one and a 4.80 with four saves. Brew, 31 years old from Napa, California. Warren Brewstar. Ron Meredith pitched five innings in relief. He gave up three runs on nine hits. He did not strike a strike out a batter. He walked four, two of those intentionally. And he too leaves with no decision. And Howard Johnson will lead it off. So the Mets have another right-hander in there. Dick Ruthman started the game and went only one inning as he was hit on the left foot by a line drive off the bat of Keith Hernandez in the first inning. So Dick, no doubt, was having that foot x-rayed. Ron Meredith as the long man. Well, the Phillies have edged closer. Scored one in the eighth. Now top of the ninth in Philadelphia. 5-4 St. Louis leading. Joaquin Andujar still in there for the Cardinals. Johnson one for two on the night. Fastball outside. Bruce Starr, sinker slider, standard equipment. Two and out of Howard Johnson. Four to four ball game. Bottom of the seventh inning. Mets trying to win their fifth in a row, and the Cubs trying to prevent losing the five in a row as Jesse Orozco is up and throwing. Chicago manager Jim Fry before the ball game told me the obvious. He said this is the biggest series of the year for us. If the Cubs are going to do anything they have got to win at least two out of three from the Mets. But as far as they're concerned they would naturally prefer a sweep. They lose tonight they got to face Dwight Gooden tomorrow afternoon. And they'll be ten games back. Two and one to Howard Johnson. Ball hit well to right center. This ball's got a chance. Dernier's back there. And he makes the catch up against the wall. About two feet from the wall, really. One more bite of steak this afternoon. <laughs> one out. Well, just a biscuit away, as they say. One more biscuit for breakfast. One more bite of steak. Ocho hit that ball so high that it really didn't have much of a chance to get out. What wind there is is blowing in a little bit from right center field. But there isn't much wind to help it or hurt it. Santana the batter. Rafi one for two with an RBI. One and oh. Be interesting to see if Santana makes an out whether McDowell will be allowed to hit for himself. Say on the line at third. Slider and a beauty, one and one. There's the way it stands going into play tonight. The Mets on top, 21 over 500 and a half game ahead of the Cardinals. And he cuts nine back. Ground ball is short. Good play by Boa. And he gets Santana by a couple of steps. So it looks like McDowell will be allowed to hit for himself. Number 42, Mets pitcher Roger McDowell. And Roger being the late man and one of the two closers along with Jesse Orozco for David Johnson does not get a lot of at-bats. He's hitting only 0-83 with one hit and 12 times up 
with no RBIs. Four to four ball game, bottom of the seventh inning. Line drive, base hit up the middle. Toss all the stats out the window in this game. Man. The 22nd hit in this ball game. The Mets are really pounding that ball. And nothing cheap about this. And that ball was in a good location. Mm -hmm. Roger went out and lined it right up the middle. He ought to know how to hit it. He throws it. I guess so. <laughs> He's seen enough from the other end. That's right. <laughs> Probably thinking, how in the world can guys not hit by a sinker? Yeah. Piece of cake. Right? Look at this. Just reach out there and slap at it. Put the bad part of the bat on it and hit a liner. Nothing to it. <laughs> Lynn Dykstra, one for three. His walk, single, fly to center, and grounded to short. Why is Durham holding McDowell on, you wonder? Fastball outside. Well, I'm sure Len Dykstra's glad to see it, although Len rarely pulls the ball unless it's down and in. But with the sinker ball pitcher going, he's got a chance to pull a low pitch. Yeah, his only hit tonight, a ground ball through the hole. And a ground ball through the hole. There you are. McDowell will go to third base. Dykstra holding it first. And I'll guarantee you that single by Dykstra the reason he got it was because Leon Durham was holding Roger McDowell on and that is that simple if he had not been holding him on Durham makes the play walks over to the bag and the inning is over see where Durham is and he doesn't get very far off when the pitch is made either had he gotten off a la Keith Hernandez who jumps out there about three big steps he still could have made a play on that ball but and, and he the obvious near the line. excuse me Steve the obvious is that Roger McDowell's not going anywhere. Sprained an ankle earlier. He's a pitcher. How many pitchers run outside Joaquin Andujar? <laughs> <laughs> with or without a sign. <laughs> or how many relief pitchers are going to steal a base? That's right. And with a left-handed hitter up and a sinker ball pitcher up, you have got to play behind the hitter. Yes, sir. Wally Backman, the batter. Mets have runners at the corners and two outs. Wally, two for three. Ground ball. Base hit left field. The Mets lead five to four. And Roger McDowell started it with a two out base hit. Since then, single by Dykstra and a single by Backman. Three straight hits off Bill Star, and it is five to four, New York. Wally's third hit of the night, and he drives in his 24th run of the year. And the batter, Keith Hernandez. And Roger just put himself in a position to be the winning pitcher if the Mets can hold on, and he finishes the game. Hernandez, two for four, batting 303 in the last six weeks. He has lifted his average from 251 to 303. Got a chance to do some more damage. Pass ball is outside, 1 and 0. Keith has hit four ropes tonight. Now, last night when he got five hits, three or four of those were not exactly blue darters out there. Tonight, he has lined one off of the starting pitcher, Ruthman, that sent him out of the ball game eventually. And his other out in the fourth inning was a line drive right at second baseman Ryan Sandberg. Two and zero to Hernandez. Boy, if you could bottle his stroke, you'd make a lot of money, my friend. As he said before the game in the pregame interview, he feels as good at the plate right now as he feels he can feel, or as, as he ever has. When you're going well, it's tough to explain. When you're going poorly, you know exactly what you're doing wrong. But it's, <laughs> even though it's easy to identify, it's hard to correct. That's right. <laughs> Two and oh. Three and oh to Hernandez. And he'll be given the green light, no doubt. Daryl Strawberry on deck. Five to four, New York. Keith has driven in 35 runs in the last 32 ball games. 
Backman at first, Dykstra at second. And he had one to hammer there, but he took it. Three and one. Might have been just a hair out of that zone, that little box he has. And you got to trust his judgment with the eye he has. He has an exceptional eye and the patience to go with it. I trust it. I trust it. <laughs> Make a believer out of you following this guy every day. and misses at a tough, tough slider. Three and two to Hernandez. Runners will be off. This pitch down and in, a place where Keith might be able to drive it a long way, but good movement on the pitch. Late breaking slider. Three, two, two out. Dykstra and Backman will be off. Swings and misses at the same pitch as the 3-1 count. So a good job of getting out of further damage by Bruce Starr. However, the Mets score one run, three hits, they strand two. They have now stranded 13 through seven and lead five to four. We'll go to the eighth after this word from Met Light. The classy lady, Angie Dickinson. Well, 44,309 paid, 46,194 total in the park tonight. And they have been treated to a good ball game. Really a fan's game. A lot of hitting, a lot of line drives, a lot of reason to boo, a lot of reasons to cheer for the home team. Jody Davis, one of the reasons to boo for the home crowd. He has homered twice and singled once. Montreal defeated Pittsburgh at the Big O 7-2. Home runs number 11 and 12 for Davis. And a fastball is low and away, 1-0. Jody might look into asking Johnny Bench to follow him around now that John's retired, you know. <laughs> yeah. Be his personal hitting coach. One and one to Jody Davis. Twelve home runs career against the Mets. He is a good clutch hitter. Fastball misses. Davis has given up only five home runs this year, and he's given up two to the Chicago Cubs, Keith Moreland and Ryan Sandberg. Oh, what a sinker that was. Two and two to Jody Davis. Roger McDowell just has some outstanding movement on his pitches, and that ball ooh, at the last second took off for the South 40. 2-2 <laughs> two, two to Davis. Got him again. That's the first strikeout for Roger McDowell. And with one away, the batter, Ron Say. And a similar pitch. Going down and away. Boy, that has got to be unbelievable for a right-handed hitter. That ball gives you the illusion of a strike and disappears. Almost like a dry spitter, huh? Ron Say the batter. Ron 0 for 3 on the night. He has not had a home run in his last 52 ball games. Jams him with a fastball. Boy, you talk about getting in his kitchen. He was all the way in the pantry on that one. Two out. Man. He was into the cupboard right here. I mean, this you talk about fist in the ball out there. The bat shattered. Say almost fell down. He was so off balance after the swing. If he hadn't swung, the ball might have hit him. He's ate him up. And now with a pinch hitter coming out for Larry Boa. Two out and nobody on. Richie Hebner is going to be the pinch hitter. And you saw Hernandez and Johnson both in talking to McDowell. Hebner leading the league in pinch hit RBIs with 11. He is second in the National League with 11 pinch hits to his teammate Thad Bosley, who leads the league with 12 pinch hits. And Rich
Ritchie as a pinch hitter, 11 for 32 with 11 RBIs. Lee Smith in the bullpen, as one might expect in a tight ball game. So oh, Ritchie's 258 average overall, significantly better with that 11 for 32 as a pinch hitter. And a good low ball hitter, just like Leon Durham. Grounds this one, however, to Hernandez, but it's foul. Jim Fry doing everything he can think of to try and win this ball game because as you aptly pointed out Timmy with Gooden going tomorrow the Cubs already trailing the Mets by nine would desperately like to win this ball game and have a game going in. Oh and one to Richie Hebner two out nobody on we're in the eighth Mets up five to four. One and one to Hebner. Great article this spring. And gosh, I forgot who wrote the article. I had it with me tonight and I've lost the article. But he was describing a spitter. And it was a great description of the spitter. It said, picture a tire rolling down the highway. And in Roger McDowell's case you can picture a tire rolling down the highway try to right? hit it <laughs> try and hit it two and one the tumbling effect of a spitter is kind of the tumbling effect of Roger McDowell's sinker I remember you and I discussing that during spring training and mm -hmm. I too cannot remember who wrote the article but. he was a writer with the St. Petersburg Times it was a dandy article and he will pardon us for not mentioning it but hang with him we'll see you next spring <laughs> And Richie Hebner gets a hang with him, too, as Wally Backman throws him out. Five in a row, retired by McDowell. And after seven and a half, it's five to four New York. We'll go to the middle of the eighth after this word from Burger King. As Richie Hebner pinch hit for Larry Boa, Warren Brewstar is still in there. And our diligence has paid off, Mr. Steve. <laughs> we found the article. Tom Zuko was the writer for the St. Petersburg Times who had that great line that a spitter is like picturing a tire rolling down a highway. That's what a spitter looks like. And here's a guy who can turn it around, and here's a guy who can talk about it, Steve Zabriskie. Thank you, Tim. Yes, sir. Daryl Strawberry, Danny Heap, and Clint Hurdle, the three scheduled hitters. I should say George Foster and Clint Hurdle, the three scheduled hitters. Here in the eighth inning for New York, it is 5-4 Mets as we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Darrell had an RBI single back in the first inning. He has fly to center and popped out in foul territory to third baseman Ron Say. He was also walked intentionally. Big cut but no contact. Here's another line from Tom Zuko's article. Trying to get a player to talk about the spitter is like trying to get Mr. T to fess up that Bory George is his role model. <laughs> I love it. Isn't that great. <laughs> Talk about the antithesis of Mr. T. That would be Boy George. <laughs> George Frazier, you saw a moment ago in the Chicago bullpen. That's inside to Darrell. And the count now three and one. Warren Brewstar working his second inning in relief. He is the third Chicago pitcher of the night. Piled away. Three and two. Darrell with 10 home runs and 31 RBIs in his last 31 games. And with Wally Backman hitting, you know, he fights and scratches for everything he gets. Darrell is so smooth. You just love to watch him coil and uncoil. And he can uncoil. Three and two. And he walks. So the Mets have their leadoff batter on to open the eighth inning. First walk issued by Bruce Starr. And the batter will be George Foster, who walked his first time up in the sixth inning. In case you're wondering, both the Cubs and the Mets have had pretty good success in one-run ball games this year. The Mets are 24 and 21 in one-run games. The Cubs are 20 and 16. 
And also, in case you're wondering, the Phillies are still out in the bottom of the ninth, a very important ball game. St. Louis over the Phillies, five to four. Oops. At the very mention of the Phillies, they probably just made the last out. Final, 5-4. Andujar beats the Phillies for the first time this year. And our crack staff right on top of yes, it. Yes, sir. Low to Foster for ball one. So Montreal has one and St. Louis has one. The Mets need to win to maintain their leads over those two teams in the East. Strawberry chased back. Darrell has 15 stolen bases this year. And Darrell running. The pitch is missed by Foster, and Strawberry is in there. Sandberg can't believe it. But Fred Brocklander says Strawberry got under the tag. First stolen base of the night for the Mets. Darrell now with 16 on the year. Well, with the naked eye, it appeared that Darrell was out at second base. A good throw by Davis and a quick tag by Sandberg. But those long legs appeared on the replay to touch second before Sandberg made the tag. A tough ball to throw for Jody Davis. He had a lot to do, but makes a good throw. Now, let's see. No, he never tagged him. He never came close to him. He never touched him. Whoops. That was a good try by Ryan. Acting the Academy Award, right? Give it to him. Brock Lander didn't go for it, however. So one and one to Foster, and now two balls, one strike, with Strawberry at second and nobody out. We should change this to an Emmy Award since we're on television. Good thinking. I mean, not even close to him. He missed him by eight inches. And look at Brocklander, boy. He's looking right in there. That was a good call. He knew he didn't touch him. And ordinarily, well, some of the time anyway, if the ball beats the runner, the runner gets called out even when the tag is missed. Brocklander right on it. Three and one now to Foster. That's also the advantage of that straight in slide rather than hook sliding. You just don't get to the base as fast. And the great base dealers either dive head first and go straight in, or like Lou Brock did, straight in with the feet. Shortest distance is still a straight line. Mm -hmm. Timmy Raines, the same way. Skied down the right field line in foul territory. Durham is over but won't have a play. As it's about five or six rows back. So three and two. George has a six game hitting streak going. Clint Hurdle, the on deck hitter. And Bruce Starr and Davis trying to get together on the signs. And they take too much time for Foster's liking, so he steps up. Strawberry at second. Nobody out here in the bottom of the eighth. The Mets are leading by one, five to four. And a ground ball foul outside third. Still three and two. Played perfectly. Tap back up the middle. Spire will go to first to get Foster, and Strawberry crosses over to third now with one away. Good base running by Strawberry. If you're the runner at second base, a ball hit to your left or right at you, you go to third. And Strawberry, with magnificent instincts as a baseball player, goes to third base. Not even a play on him. And Jim Fry is out with Hurdle, the left handed hitter, coming up. He's putting in a call to the bullpen. So Warren Brewstar pitches one and a third. 
charged so far with one run on three hits. He struck out one, walked one, and is responsible for Strawberry at third base. So, if it's George Frazier, I don't understand why he's bringing in another right-hander to pitch to Hurdle. Well, maybe to, maybe for the strikeout, Bruce Starr is a contact pitcher, and George Frazier says that he throws a split-finger fastball. One is more inclined to think that it's a tire rolling down a highway. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, he really doesn't have a left-handed reliever that he can go to in this situation. Meredith, who has been their only left-handed reliever lately, as you look at Bruce Starr on the bench has already pitched in the ball game. So George Frazier comes in. Six and five, two saves and a 4.39 ERA. As you see, he's worked 53 in the third innings, walked 34, struck out 32. Fans, a vengeful cop executes his own brand of justice in one man jury. Jack Palance stars Saturday night at 8 on the million dollar movie. Jack Palance from Hazleton, Pennsylvania. And of course, made his debut as a rookie in that movie Shane that we always remember. Well, Brandon DeWilda and wasn't DeWilda. Yeah, and wasn't, uh, wasn't he with the epitome of the bad guy? Oh, and man. I mean, he was evil, wasn't he? When I was with the Philadelphia Phillies, Jack Palance came to the stadium one night, and I interviewed him, Steve. And I said, well, Jack, <laughs> I asked him one of those generic questions. <laughs> well, Jack, what brings you to town? He said, he looked at me, and he said, what do you mean, what brings me to town? Ooh. I live close to here. Ooh. I, well, that started the pits going, I'll tell you that, pal. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Well, you can also spend an afternoon with the best in baseball when the Mets challenge the Chicago Cubs Sunday at 1.30 right here on Channel 9, the home of the Mets. Yeah. Yeah. Home of movies starring Jack Palance, too. <laughs> the thing about him, too, is he's got the voice to go with it. The dramatic way in which he speaks. Yeah. Mm. It's nasty. But he's really a really nice guy from what I understand, like most movie villains. Clint Hurdle has had a good night, starting in place of Gary Carter tonight with a single, a double, and an RBI. He's also hit his, and his two other at-bats hit the ball very well. Strawberry is at third base, one away, and in the infield in all the way around for Chicago. Hurdle is lined out and fly deep to center field and his two outs. Breaking ball, that split-finger job. You don't usually see it thrown that high, but it dropped in there for strike one. One and one. Frazier, the fourth pitcher used by Chicago. Boy, that one had the bottom fall out of it. One and two. There's the kind of bat you might be able to hit that ball with. On the ground to first, Durham will hold Strawberry at third, step on the bag, and two away. Well, that's what Jimmy Fry wanted. He wanted an anxious Clint Hurdle to hit against the split finger fastball or whatever it is. Got to take George for his word. He says that's a split finger fastball, and it's a split finger fastball, right? And well, why did you say or whatever it is? <laughs> well, because I'm in doubt as to whether his word. <laughs> you just said, you know, nobody, no spitter, no spitballer will tell you that he's that's throwing true. a spitter. That's true. And they won't. Gaylord Perry is the only one who's ever admitted it. Howard Johnson one for three plus a walk. He singled the center in the fifth inning and fly deep to center to right center field his last time up. And he hits a rope down the line and right and it's in there. Strawberry scores and Johnson on a good play by Moreland will be held with a single. Mets up seven to five here in the bottom of the eighth or rather six to four excuse me here in the bottom of the eighth inning for Johnson his 29th RBI of the year. And a good piece of hitting by Howard Johnson, and what a big run this is. There is a big difference between one and two runs in the ninth inning. 
Orland does make a nice play, but Hojo has his 29th RBI of the year, and Strawberry scores. That run charged to Warren Brewstar. So he allows two earned runs in an inning and a third. A big two out base hit with an extra run. Rafael Santana, one for three, a sacrifice fly in the third inning to drive in a run to go with a single to left back in the second. And on the first pitch, Johnson running, and he's in there easily. The ball into center field, and Hojo will go to third. It'll be a stolen base and a throwing error on catcher Jody Davis, allowing Johnson to go to third base. It's Howard's fourth stolen base of the year and the Mets' second of the night. One thing that Charlie Samuels, the clubhouse director of the New York Mets, loves is the clean uniforms. He loves that. Howard Johnson with that dirty uniform. Get him ready, Charlie. He looks like he's played a baseball game, doesn't he? And he has. The pitch was a strike to Santana, 0-1, and, and that's high, 1-1. One and one. So the Mets with another runner at third base and two out. 6-4, to four, New York, bottom of the eighth inning. The Mets now with 16 hits. Just outside, two and one. Ruben Amaro, Jim Fry, and Billy Connors. Looking on. And Santana skies it to right. Moreland coming on should make the catch and does. And the inning is over, but the Mets pick up a big run here in the eighth on a walk and a base hit. Six to four, New York as we go to the ninth after this for Manufacturers Handle. It's the 11 o'clock hour. Bazaar, starring John Biner, will be seen right after Ralph and Kiner's Corner, which follows the ball game as per usual right here on Channel 9. Thad Bosley, the number one pinch hitter this year in the National League, will pinch hit for George Frazier as we start the ninth inning with the Mets leading six to four. Bosley with 12 pinch hits and 34 at bats overall hitting an even 300 on the year. Facing Roger McDowell in his third inning of relief. And a sharply hit ground ball right at Wally Backman very quickly one away. August 15th is Action Park Day at Shea. Your ticket stub from the August 15th Mets game entitles you to half price admission to Action Park throughout the 1985 season. So come to Shea and save at Action Park. A lot of action in this game, too. And action in the Mets bullpen, as you saw. Jesse Orozco, just in case. Bob Dernier, one for four. Doubled and scored in the fifth inning. That's high. Ball one. Jesse Roscoe's getting ready for Leon Durham. <laughs> Durham's a fourth hitter, and Davey Johnson remembered Leon Durham the last time. He hit that frozen rope to left field with two runners aboard. Swing and a miss on the sinker, and it's one and one. Roger McDowell hoping Leon Durham doesn't get the bat here right. in the ninth inning. Then here to be followed by Sandberg. Then Matthews and Durham with one out already recorded and nobody on in the ninth. And a ground ball to short. Santana has to wait for the hop and gets him. <laughs> Raphael, as usual, got rid of it in a hurry. Watch this. Man, one motion. In between hop, he knew Dernier ran very quickly to first. Now watch the fluid motion. One motion. And the accuracy on top of that. Rarely does he make a bad throw. Just like me in 1975 with the Red Sox. A quick release. Right down every time right on the bag. <laughs> oh, quick release. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's right. You went to Boston. <laughs> 75. I got it. I was a little late, but I got it. <laughs> Sandberg, a big night after coming into the game 0 for his last 15. Three for four, two singles, a double, an RBI, two stolen bases. And he's the Cubs' last hope with two out in the ninth. 
Strike at the knees. One and one. That's outside. Two and one. Six runs on 16 hits, no errors for New York. The Cubs with four runs on nine hits and one error. The Mets with 36 hits in their last two ball games. Fouled off. Caught a piece of Clint Hurdle and went on back. And it's two and two. And now what's left of this crowd of 46,000 standing. And cheering on Roger McDowell and their New York Mets. The Mets trying to stay in first place a half a game ahead of Chicago. I mean St. Louis as the Cardinals have already won tonight. That's foul and it's still two and two. The Mets with a victory tonight can go 22 games over 500. Trying to win their 26th game in their last 33. Mm. The Mets will be 64 and 42 if they can get the final out. Roger McDowell picks up the victory in relief of Ron Darling to move his record to six and four on the year. And the New York Mets remain in first place, winning their fifth ball game in a row with a 6-4 to four win over Chicago. And a big win it is in the first of this three-game series. The Cubs drop ten games back. The Cardinals a half a game back, and Montreal four behind the first-place Mets. Ron Darling started the game and went six, but left the ball game tied. And Roger McDowell pitches the last three to pick up the sixth win of the year against four losses. And the reaction of Davey Johnson and also Jimmy Fry to the left of your screen. Well, I'll tell you, you're seeing two ball clubs going in opposite directions. The Mets winning five in a row. The Cubs have lost their fifth in a row. Mm. New York putting it all together with 16 base hits, 36 hits in the last two games. And Tim and I will be back to wrap it up for you. Ralph is standing by with another edition of Kiner's Corner. Stay with us. The Mets win it 6-4 to four over Chicago. We're back after this for Nissan. <laughs> 